Hey, I received a message in my inbox a couple days ago from someone that's a couple months out from surgery, about two months exactly, and she had a really good question and I wanted to talk about it here. And it was, um, she was struggling with craving, you know, sweets and chocolate and candies and cookies and cakes and didn't know what to do and felt, felt really lost. Um, and this is something that I think a lot of people struggle with kind of around this two month mark and, and further out uh, because you can start to eat more solid foods. You're really, really sick. Let me scoot this around. Um, really sick of pureed and blended foods probably and <laughs> just like soft, mushy things. Um, and, and a lot of times, you know, certain cravings come back. And, you know, one thing I think is really important is as you get a little bit further out and you're starting to eat normal textures and normal foods, um, is to really start thinking about what what does my body really need and what what do I feel like I really need? And that is very abstract concept. A lot of people, it's extremely difficult and it, it does take time. It's not something that I can give you a, a play-by-play rule book on how to do this. But, you know, if you notice you're really starting to crave, you know, sweets or for a lot of people it may be different fruits or a lot of people it's um, you know bread cereals pastas one thing i've noticed a lot of times is that it's probably from a lack of carbohydrates you know obviously after surgery we are really pushing the protein at you and that is not necessarily to help with weight loss specifically but it's to help you heal mainly and to maintain that muscle mass that you have right? Because as you lose weight, a percentage of that muscle mass um, or a percentage of the weight loss is muscle, especially if you're not eating enough protein and you're not as physically active, which let's be honest, those first few weeks after surgery, you you can't be that physically active. You know, you can do some walking, maybe some light activity, um, but you can't aggressively exercise. And so that protein is what helps to maintain your muscle. And it also helps with, you know, every other different kind of function, hormones, enzymes in your body. Um, So that's where we really push the protein. Now, the weight loss mainly comes from the decrease in portion sizes and then is also kind of helped along with, you know, a degree of malabsorption depending on what surgery you had. And so frequently what gets pushed to the forefront for people is avoid carbs, you know, go less than 50 grams a day or less than 100 or less than 30, whatever it is, uh, which I really think is is not helping you <laughs> in this in this game, in this, um, you know, role to get or, you know, way to get healthier. And instead, I think it's focusing on those whole food carbohydrates. So having fresh fruit, having some oats, maybe some quinoa, uh, some beans, lentils, those typically are very well tolerated. A little bit of roasted potatoes. A lot of times um, your breads, some cereals, pasta, rice, those tend to kind of expand with um, when you eat them, you know, they expand in water naturally. Um, and then when you consume them, they can kind of feel like they're expanding more, which can make people feel really uncomfortable. So I tend to kind of, you know, use those with caution. Everyone has their own tolerance level. So that's something you just kind of have to play with on your own. Um, but to do try to go to some of those other whole food versions of carbohydrates to see if that can maybe help with some of those intense cravings. The other thing is if you are still having these intense cravings, let's say I always use chocolate as the prime example, um, have a little bit, you know, our goal for you is not to deprive you of all those foods that you love. You know, I'm a dietitian. It is my job to quote unquote eat healthy. If you told me I couldn't have chocolate tomorrow, I'd give you the middle finger because (laughs) I'm going to have it. Yes, I know it's not necessarily you know, packed full of chemicals. I know there's some research about dark chocolate, but let's be honest, it's not that healthy. Um, But I like it and I'm going to keep eating it because guess what? I like it. (laughs) Um, But I also know that there's this delicate balance, right? Between a small amount that I like and that I can enjoy and savor and an amount that really no longer fits in with my greater goals, um, including, you know, health and whatnot. And so that can be the tricky part is finding that, that delicate balance, right? This is where there's no rule book. This is why 
diets don't work because they're not sustainable. And it's this piece of the puzzle that most of us don't um, take the time to focus on for various reasons, not to lay blame on anything. It's not easy. It's, you know, it's my job to kind of focus on this, but you know, it, it took me a good 10 years probably to really, um, get a full understanding. I don't even, maybe I shouldn't say full understanding cause I'm probably, I'm still working on it. Right. It's ongoing. Um, but anyways, just to kind of, you know, think about these things, think about, you know, what really feels good in your body, what makes you feel good after you eat it, not just in the moment. Uh, a lot of times, you know, if I tell you, you can't have something, what do you want? You immediately want that, right? Same thing with me. If somebody tells me I can't have something, that's exactly what I want at that moment. So if you can kind of take that away, you can really kind of empower yourself in a sense, but it really does involve a degree of, of thought. So anyways, I'm kind of going off on a couple different tangents, which is normal here, but I wanted to kind of explain that, that maybe where this, this intense craving can be coming from. Um, and also, you know, sometimes just have a little bit, you know, see how you feel. Don't go overboard, eat slow, savor it. Um, and, and just, you know, take note of, of how it feels in your body, you know, before, during, and after. So if you have any questions, comment in the section below. Uh, I know this is a, a tough topic to really grasp um, fully or to, to experiment with, but I'm here if you have any questions or want to um, hash through things or you know send me a message too if you want to do it privately. All right.